Well, good afternoon, Matt. Take it afternoon. And, uh, good to see you here. And as one ex-CIO to another CIO who's rising through the ranks, um, start off with an old joke. And does CIO mean career is over? <laughs> Um, I mean, we, we've been hearing quite a lot about CDOs and uh, CTOs, etc. So I'd be very interested to, to get your take on you know, what exactly is the role of the CIO, how is it evolving, and where do you see it going? In fact, what's your vision? What do you see as the, the mission and purpose of a CIO? Because you've, you've obviously had uh, experience of quite a few organizations now. Mm -hmm. And uh, it would be quite interesting to find out the background and the uh, differences between those organizations and how you see that role evolving uh, over time now and in the future. Okay. So I think that the, the, some of the, the phrases that you use, the CDO and things like that, I think organizations needed to create such jobs in order to give a focus to transformational change that they were trying to drive. I. I have a personal view that I don't see lots of longevity in the CDO role. Um, I see it as a stepping stone type, type position. But I think the CIO and the way that I view what I do as being th a conduit between all those technical things that people in, the, in our business and in our clients' businesses are having to use every day. The technology is becoming more and more important to them in every aspect of their working lives. And our kind of executive and our leaders in our organization and the things that, that they want to try and drive strategically, and I act as the conduit there, and that's around all the information that our firm holds. And I guess in some ways that means that I am on, operating on a spectrum of plumber on the one hand, so oh. just keeping things oh. running, oh. through to innovator on the other, and trying to help the organization understand how they can extract value from technology investments, how they can find the data that we've got existing within our organization, how they can leverage that to the advantage of us and our, and our clients, how we can wrap security around the whole thing oh. and keep it oh keep what we need to keep safe safe sure. and give assurances to our clients that we are we are treating their data with the respect that it deserves uh, and I see that as being the job that I do so I'm kind of a little bit like I'm an agitator on the one hand and mm -hmm. I'm a safe pair of hands on the other and mm -hmm. you know I, I've got a role to play in making sure that that technology kind of I, in some ways I view myself as a bit like a needle and thread and I help thread things together and, and more recently, that's a nice analogy. Yes. Yeah, more recently, I see myself as somebody who is actually a real advocate for business change and, and is the conscience in the room around making sure that we apply the right amount of investment to the business change and changes in processes that are required. From a technology perspective, there are very few questions that we can ask. Oh. Where you say, can technology do this? The answer these days is nearly always yes. And then there's a but that comes, and there's a, there's a price, there's a risk, there's a whatever consequence. But actually, the bigger challenge is coming in all the things that people want to do. Oh. How, do you, how do you change the way that you work? Oh. And, uh, and I, look, you know, I look at, for example, at things like volumes of email. So one of the most common questions I get asked by the stakeholders in our business today is, how can you, pointing at me, reduce the volume of emails that I get? <laughs> to which the answer is, well, actually, I, I can give you all sorts of wonderful tools that will help you filter and create rules and, oh. and other things. But actually, culturally, I cannot change alone mm. the fact that, that we live in a business which thrives on email. And, and some people find those email volumes, they get still very overwhelming. 